Well hey guys, it's Michael here. Today we're going to do some TIG welding and uh, we're going to be using the titanium welder alongside the Vulcan Omni Pro. And uh, we're going to start off this video first with 120 volts. I know some of you guys have requested videos about 120 volt use because that's all you have in your shop. And then later we're, we're going to move on to 240 volts with these machines. I'm pretty new to TIG welding so I'm going to try my best on it. We got some ER70 uh, welding rod and we also got some silicon bronze will get a little brazing done towards the end of the video so stick around check it out all right we got the titanium plugged into 120 volts on that voltage it goes from 90 amps to the range all the way down to 15 amps is what it can go on and uh, we got some eighth inch tubing we're going to be welding that at 90 amps we got the gas set to about 12 uh, cubic feet per hour and we're going to start off by just tack welding this the nice thing about tack welding these things is you can just fuse the two metals together without adding any filler rod like I said, I'm still learning uh, TIG welding, but it's definitely been a lot of fun to learn. bring you guys in so you can check out that weld. Well, there's that weld. This little machine works pretty good. All right, we got the titanium plugged into 240 volts, and at this setting, it will go up to 200 amps. We're gonna be welding some quarter inch plate here, and we kind of ground it to a V to get a little deeper penetration in that. We got the titanium set about 160 amps, increase the gas flow to 15 cubic feet per hour. And you guys might be noticing I'm welding with the Pyrex cup. I got this cheap cup kit on uh, Amazon. Uh, if you guys are interested, there'll be a link down below where I got it. It was around 20 bucks. I didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference, but you guys maybe seen the other video where I tried it out, and I was really surprised. It seemed like it's been a slow learning curve of TIG welding, and even when I didn't think with the original cups on here, I didn't think I was uh, contaminating the tip from dipping it, I was realizing it was causing uh, bad gas coverage and causing the metal to kind of boil and bubble and get on the tip. Put this on, not only can you see better, you can use less gas. It just seemed like a way easier time for me to do this stuff. You're getting cleaner welds. I never had really clean welds before with the old pink ceramic cups. So my recommendation, shuck those things and just buy a $20 kit like this. Like I said, there'll be a link to Amazon where I got them below. I felt it was a big change for a learning curve here. So we'll get welding. All right, here we go. Bring you guys in for that shot. All right, you guys, gonna do a little bit of TIG brazing real quick. We got some eighth inch tubing and we have the titanium set to 66 amps. 65 would do just fine. Anyways, um, the whole idea with this bronze brazing rod is you don't have to melt the base metals. You just have to heat them up and blend in the rod here. Uh, this stuff is different than your oxygen acetylene brazing rod, so that stuff really won't work right for TIG brazing. This stuff, I was kind of hard to find. I couldn't find it locally, so I found this stuff on Amazon. There will be a link below to where you can find it. The kind of neat stuff about this, other than it looking like a really cool joint, having that bronze look, it would be good for artistic stuff. I got it for doing coffee tables and furniture and stuff, and artwork and things. But um, it's good for repairing cracks in cast metal. It's also um, good for joining dissimilar metals, like you can TIG braze steel to copper, or steel to bronze, or bronze to copper, things like that. Anyways, we'll get blended here. All right. We'll bring you in to check out that joint. 
All right, here it is. So I found this stuff kind of likes a little bit higher shielding gas. That's why I'm running at about 15, kind of like I was with the quarter inch plate uh, or it'll oxidize, but I haven't taken the wire brush to it yet, but we'll clean it up a little bit more. But it's just got a nice quality look to it. And another thing, uh, I found it lays on pretty nice with just the lay wire technique where you literally just lay the wire in the seam of it and you just follow down it with the torch and just blend it down. So that's how I lay it on and it works pretty well. All right, got the Vulcan plugged into 120 volts. Let's turn it on here. Nice thing about the Vulcan is it seems to be a lift TIG where you touch it and then you lift away and it starts the TIG, the titanium scratch start. And you can run a pedal on the Vulcan and I don't know of any pedal available yet for the titanium. But we're running both these welders today without a pedal, just to be all fairness. But like if you want more amperage control, you have more with the Vulcan here with the pedal. But no pedal today. That lift start is pretty damn nice there. I'll bring you guys in for a view of that well. All right, got the Vulcan plugged into 240 uh, volts and we got some quarter inch plate. We got the gas turned back up to 15. And uh, I know something interesting about the Vulcan. It goes all the way down to 10, the titanium was 15, but the titanium went to 200 amps they claim. And this one claims it goes up to 175. Who knows which one is act more accurate, but it auto set was for 160 amps, so we're gonna get welding here. With these manual torches you got to leave a little bit of shielding gas for a moment after the weld. So that's kind of the tricky part is you got to pull away really quick to break the arc and bring it back in, not touch it back on the metal and shield it. Well, there you have it. Laid down some weld. You guys got to see them work on 120 and 240. Got to see a little bit of amperage variation between these machines. They both weld really nice. This one, a scratch start, which works just fine. Strike it like a match and it gets rolling. Uh, and then this guy is a lift start, which is really nice. You just touch the metal and lift up and it starts either or if you're gonna learn or you have done welding, I think either of them will take weld just fine. I'm just learning. I've been playing around with them for the last two or three months, a little bit on the side when I get time. And so I'm still learning. I bet the hands of uh, these welders in the hands of an experienced welder would probably be able to take weld even better. But you know what? I felt like I've done pretty well so far just learning it and just get better from this point. Um, the big change for me was buying those Pyrex cups. I've been playing around with this stuff off and on here and there when I get a little bit of time. And all the welds always look kind of crappy, kind of grayish looking. No matter what gas setting I had, it just never seemed to be good. And also it seemed like the tips constantly got contaminated with tungsten. So um, I ended up getting those and it was a big difference. I think what was happening was bad gas coverage. It's causing the metal to bubble and fling up some bub bubbly stuff onto the tungsten. Um, anyways, I contaminate the tips far less, almost not at all. This, in this video, there's no tungsten contaminated. So just let you guys know that. Anyways, um, both welders weld good. We noticed that this goes up to 175 amps. This goes to 200. Who knows? They're just numbers. But I don't know if there will be a pedal for a variable amperage on the titanium. 
Um, I do know that you can buy a pedal. I didn't use the pedal I had in, for this machine tonight. Um, just want to let you guys know something. When I first got the Omni Pro, I was all excited about you know getting a spool gun for it, and I ended up adapting the Miller spool gun to run on this thing. And um, I also wanted a TIG, and I ran out, and as soon as they came in, I bought the TIG torch and pedal. You don't need the pedal. You can use the pedal, but especially if you're learning, just get going with, just grab the TIG torch, because you can set the amperage. One last thing, I felt the pedal, just learning, was just one more variation to throw in the mix I didn't need. So just, if you want to get welded with this thing you have, it, just go by the TIG torch and get going, set the amperage, and just get rolling, because you need practice anyways if you're learning. And that was my feeling. Tonight we didn't use the pedal at all, we just set the amperage and rolled. Keep in mind, these are DC TIG machines. They can't weld aluminum. Uh, you need an AC with high frequency to weld aluminum, so these machines won't do it. These will be weld uh, steel and stainless steel. Um, and you know, it's it's pretty nice process to use and learn TIG. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And uh, yeah, so that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Till next time, guys. Take care. Bye.